shake your base. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Let's go. Welcome to the show. Okay. So, on the last show, we got you to learn all about the Phillies uh, ahead of London. And now, as promised, we're going to now get you to learn a bit more about the Mets, our opponents, um, for the weekend. Okay. So. Uh, so yeah, so obviously by then you'll be, you'll know everything about our two teams that are coming to London this year on the 8th and 9th of June. Okay, so like last time, we're going to go through the history. Uh, as I mentioned, obviously, the, I will put the um, link to the Mets history page in the video description, just like I did for the Phillies. I love it how I mentally baseball the, for the teams have a little page for the history. That's great. I think all sports these teams need to do that because it's, it's really fascinating, especially with a, with um, basically baseball with some of these teams going back to like the the early eighteen hundreds. It's a really interesting nation. Um, so let's go. Shall we? So we'll get straight to it. So, uh, so the New York Mets they were established in nine in oh here we go in nineteen sixty two. Okay, so 1962 is when the Mets were established. Okay, so their team colours are blue, orange, and white. Uh, I'll go through you um, the ballpark history for the Mets. So currently they lie in City Field. They've been in there since 2009. Um. Other step ballparks have been have included Shea Stadium from 1964 to 2008 and Polo Grounds, yes, Grounds from 1962 to 1963. As the Mets, like the Phillies, they've just got two World Series titles to their name. Uh, the first came in 1969 and then the most recent one was in 1986. Uh, they've had won five NL pennants. Uh, most recently, actually, in 2015. Um, they won the NL Pennant in 1969, 73, 86, 2000, and then, of course, most recently in 2015. They have six NL East Division titles. First of those came in 1969, then again in 1973, 86, 88, 2006, and 2015. Uh, they've secured four wildcard bursts in 1999 as their first, they're going 2000, then 2016, and most recently in 2022. Of course, the Phillies also got into the, into the postseason as a wild card. Okay, so if, so now we'll move on to the history. Um, like I mentioned, you can obviously check this out for yourself. So there's obviously the timeline, which is a lot to get through. Um, Okay, so obviously, um, which work cover, um, but you can if you go on on the page, you can have a look for yourselves. It's really interesting. Um, so I think we'll go through. Let's do retired numbers. We'll go through that next, um, and then we'll also look at the Hall of Fame. So we'll do retired numbers. Actually, we'll do the Hall of Fame first, and then we'll go through uh, the retired numbers. Just because if it's like the Phillies, the retired numbers might take quite a while. So, uh, <laughs> so we have the Mets Hall of Fame. Let's shall we? Okay. So, so look at the Mets Hall of Fame. Let's see who have we got. We have. So here we go. Here's the Mets Hall of Fame. So we've got in the Mets Hall of Fame, we have Joan Whitney Payson, who is the owner from 1960 to 1975, president to 1968 to 1975. Um, a Whitney family heiress, Payson became the Mets first owner when the franchise uh, was born in 1960. Uh, a, bought a trailblazer of, as the first woman to buy a Major League Baseball team. 
She also served as the Mets president from 1968 to 1975 and was the team's biggest fan. While a minority owner of the New York Giants, uh, she voted against the team move to San Francisco in 1957. We've also got Charles Dillian Casey, uh, Casey Stendhal who was manager from 1962 to 65 and was vice president from 1965 to 1975 New York Baseball Institution and seven time World Series winning manager was lured out of retirement to become the first ma manager for the Mets fans grew to love the Mets as Stengel's charismatic personality and witty observations offset the club's struggles in its infancy. His 37 was the first Met number to be retired in 1965, elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1966. Next we've got Gilbert Raymond Jill Hodges, who was a player from 1963 and was a manager from 1968 all the way to 1971. Uh, managed the Miracle Mets to their first World Series championship in 1969. His leadership transformed the franchise as players adopted his work ethic and were inspired by his dignity and integrity. Uh, became a fan favourite in New York and as an eight-time All-Star with the Br Brooklyn Dodgers and original Met, he hit the first home run in team history. His 14 was the second Mets number to be retired in 1973. Ooh, they're mentioning a lot of the retired numbers already. Ooh, we should have done that first instead. Anyway, we'll carry on. Uh, next up we've got George... M. Wise, who was president from 1961 to 1966. The Mets' first president who laid the foundations for the 1969 World Series Championship. He hired Casey to become the first uh, manager for the team. Under his leadership, the Mets signed and debut uh, Tom Sever, Nolan Ryan and Tug McGraw and won seven World Series championship as a general manager before joining the Mets elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1971. Uh, we're going to now move on to William A. Shea, who was um, a prominent New York attorney who was the driving force in the effort to bring national league uh, baseball back to the city after the Dodgers and Giants both left for California in 1957 uh, yeah in case you don't know that uh, the Dodgers and the Giants were originally New York teams and of course then moved in the, mid in the late 50s to California where they've been there ever since <laughs> Uh, spe spearheaded uh, New York's Baseball Task Force, uh, who proposed a uh, rival league uh, for the National League to grant the uh, city a expansion franchise in 1960. Uh, Shea Stadium, home of the Mets from 1964 to 2008, was named in his honour. Okay, next up we've got John Joseph, uh, Johnny Murphy. Chief Scout from 1961 to 1963, Vice President from 1964 to 1967, and Vice President and General Manager from 1968 to 1970. General Manager who reshaped the Mets from lovable losers <laughs> into world champions. Uh, recruited Jill uh, Hodges to manage the club and engineer the acquisitions of Tommy. Aji and Dom uh, Clemon. Keys to the 1969 World Series title. The team debut uh, pitchers Tom Sever, 
Jamie Kuzman and Nolan Ryan during his tenure. A native New Yorker, P pitched on seven World Series championship teams. Need ring lights to try adjust the brightness. <laughs> uh, okay, right. Next up, um, Ralph Kidder, uh, broadcaster from 1962 to 2013, an original Mets Emmy Award winning broadcaster uh, uh, for the Mets for over six decades, formed one of baseball's prominent broadcasting teams with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy, well known for his post-game interviews with players on Kina's Corner. The Mets' home TV booth is named in his honour. During his 10-year playing career, he hit 369 home runs and elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1975. Bob Murphy now, a broadcaster from 1962 to 2003, an original Met and broadcaster from the team's inaugural season until his retirement in 2003, honoured with the National Baseball Hall of Fame, Ford Steve Frick Award in 1994. He's with Ralph Kinner and Lindsay Nelson on both television and radio before moving to radio exclusively in 1982. By his, his trademark happy recap after each Mets victory. Don't just don't don't. I know, I know where you're going there. It's like oh, get don't just don't don't don't. It's a family show don't. <laughs> uh, the Mets home radio booth is named in his honour. Uh, Lindsay Nelson broadcaster from nine sixty to nine seventy eight. Original Met, former Ford World of Baseball's prominent broadcasting teams for 17 seasons with Ralph Kahina and Bob Murphy. His trademark, hello everybody, I'm Lindsay Nelson. Open each broadcast. Worked as an announcer for Notre Dame Football, the National Football League and the Colton Bowl. Known for his colourful uh, jackets. Honoured with the National Baseball Hall of Fame's Ford C. Frick Award in 1988. Daryl McKinney, Bud Harrelson. Short start from 1965 to 1977. Coach from 1982. Again from 1985 to 1990. And was manager from 1990 to 1991. Player, coach and manager for over 20 seasons with the Mets. The only person to be in a Mets uniform for the club's two World Series championships player in 69 and there was a coach in 86. The two-time All-Star and Gold Glove winner played shortstop for 13 seasons. Upon retirement he ranked among the team's leaders in hits and runs. Managed the Mets for two seasons compelling at a 145-129 at record. Daniel Joseph, Rusty Stubb, uh, League uh, he was an uh, outfielder slash first baseman from 1975 and again from 1981 to 85. Uh, the All-Star outfielder helped the Mets return to the World Series in 70, 1973 where he batted 423, hit three home runs in the 1973 National League Championship Series and in 1975 became the first Mets player with 100 RBI in a season. One of the most successful pinch hitters in baseball history, well known for his charitable efforts on behalf of New York City police and firefighters' families. George Thomas Seaver, pitcher in 1977 and again in 1983. The three time CY Young Award winner became the face of the franchise and one of the most 
uh, dominant pitchers in Major League Baseball history. Uh, ranks first in club history in wins and strikeouts. Elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1992. Uh, with 11 career wins and a record 98.84% of the boat. His 41 was the third Mets number retired. Jerry is how many more we got? Mm, where are we at? I think I've got quite a way to go here. Right, we'll do. Tell you what, we'll do one more because this is this is this is getting a bit. Eh? This is getting a bit lengthy, isn't it? Right, tell you what, then we'll stop it there because this is going because this is getting lengthy. This is actually getting quite lengthy. Um, but you can. But there, so there's a couple of so there's a couple of people in the Mets Hall of Fame there. I'm gonna wrap it up there because it's this is gonna be here getting lengthy. Um, if it was the retired number section, I'd be happy to carry on, but no, not ready for that. Um, and some have already mentioned to have their numbers retired, so I might get repetitive. So yeah, so yeah, so it's quite lengthy there. It, if you want, like I said, the link will be in the script in the video description. Go and check it out for yourselves. Uh, but it's getting a bit lengthy there. Um, right, so we'll go to the next retired numbers and their honoured marks. So you've heard me mention some of them already. Um, let's go through them all. Now, when we did this for the Phillies, this is quite a bit of a morbid section because a lot of the people that have had their numbers part of the Phillies are now dead. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a bit of a morbid section. So, um, yeah, so... Just bear that in mind, okay? So, uh, right, so I'll go for it now. So these are the retired numbers for the Mets. So here we go. So we begin with... Uh, Willie Mays, number 24. Uh, his number was retired just recently on August 27, 2022. Uh, joined the Mets in 1972 to return to New York City, where his major league career began with the New York Giants in 1951. He's a 24-time All-Star, 12-time Golden Glove winner, Selected to the Major League Baseball All-Century and All-Time Team. Elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1979. Keith Hernandez, number 17. His number was uh, oh, also just recently retired. His number 17 was retired in on July 9th, 2022. I think a lot of these might be recently retired, retired numbers. Um... Founding in club history in sorry four sorry I'll start again I'll start again sorry fourth in club history got a bit too much there fourth in club history in batting average and fourth in on base percentage eleven time Gold Glove winner and holds the most the record for most Gold Glove won by a first baseman he's a member of the Raw. Rawlings Gold Glove Hall of Fame, five-time All-Star, and was inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame in 1997. Jerry Kuzman, number 36. His number 36 was recently retired on August 28, 2021. Kuzman was signed with the Mets in 1964 when he was scouting while he was pitching with the Army and played for the Mets from 1967 to 1978. He was inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame and the mu and Museum in 1989. Mike Plaza, number 31. His number 31 was retired in a tribute at City Field on July 30th, 2016. He hit 220 home runs and had 655 RBI during his Mets career from 1998 to 2005. Uh, he's a seven-time All-Star with the Mets. 
highest slug slugging percentage in team history. Holds the record for the most career home runs all time by a career with 396. Inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame in 2013 and was elected into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 2016. Jackie Robinson, number 42. His number 42 was retired throughout uh, baseball on April 15, 1927 in a pre-game ceremony at Shea Stadium featuring his wife. Sorry, his featuring, featuring his widow, sorry. His widow, sorry. Featuring his widow. Rachel Robinson. Well, at least I knew it was, it was his wife. <laughs> uh, the LB commissioner at the time, Bud Steelig. Oh, oh, another nasty crook. <laughs> and then, pre do, do, do we A's fa do we A's fans hate him more than Rob Manfred? I oh, know. <laughs> And then President Bill Clinton. Sorry. I may have now left the A's, but, it's, but I still hold all the memories and all the bad blood. So, uh. <laughs> Played for the Brooklyn Dodgers from 1947 to 1956 and was elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962. So that's an all rat so that's a league wide number. That's retired across the entire league there. So we might have cut a few times already. Um with not just the base, but also with larger the Cubs and Cardinals. Uh back to the Mets now though. Tom Steber, number forty one. His number forty one was retired in a tribute at Shea Stadium on july the twenty fourth, nineteen eighty eight. He won 311 games over twenty seasons. Rookie of the year nineteen sixty seven. Three times CY Young Award winner in 1969, 73, and 75. He's a nine time All Star, inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame and Museum in 1988, and was elected into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1992. Jill Hodges, number 14. His number 14 is retired June 9, 1973. Hit the club's first home run off Larry Jackson on April 11, 1962, at St. Louis. Sit down, Fred Bird. <laughs> Match the Mets on 968 to 71 to a 339 309 record. Led the 969 Miracle Mets to the World Series in just his second season. Third winning percent ma manager in Mets history. Inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame in 1982 and was elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 2022. And then finally, Casey Stengel, number 37 here. Number 37 was retired on September the 2nd, 1965. First manager in club history. Elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1966. And inducted to the Mets Hall of Fame in Two odd marks which will go, there are three sorry there are three odd marks which will go through. Um, New York Mets honor extraordinary off field contributions with honored marks hung among the retired numbers. So these people have those. We've got Bob Murphy. His legacy as a long time broadcaster of the New York Mets was celebrated on April the Seven, just this last year, 2023, so just this time, so last year, uh, with the unveiling of an honoured mark among the Mets, retired numbers and honoured marks. Broadcast New York Mets games from their inaugural season in 1962 until his retirement in 2003. Known for his optimistic outlook and happy recap. Don't. Just don't. Following a Mets win. He received the prestigious Ford C. Frick Award from the National Base Hall of Fame in 1994. Uh, next to receive an honor mark is Ralph Killer. His legacy is a long time broadcaster of the, of the New York Mets was celebrated on March the 31st in 2014 following the sad, the sad news of his passing uh, with the unveiling of an honored uh, mark among the Mets retired numbers and honored marks. Broadcast for the New York Mets from their inaugural season in 1960 until his death in 2014. 
He hosted the iconic Kinner's Corner post-game show featuring the stars of that day's game and occasional celebrity guests for over 30 years. He was elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1975 and inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame in 1984. And the last tavern honor mark is Bill Shea. Um, his contribution to the New York Mets was celebrated on April 8th in 2008 before the, um, the home opener of the fire season at Shea Stadium with the unveiling of an honored mark among the Mets retired numbers. Headed a committee to bring National League Baseball back to New York after both the Dodgers and the Giants left for California in 1957. Yeah, because all you don't realize the National League and American League used to be two separate leagues and up and up two separate business organizations. It's only more recently they've been now merged into one. So, yeah. Uh, Originally known as Fl Fl Flushing Metro Park Municipal Stadium, the Mets' new home ballpark was named Shea Stadium in his honour. It was adopted into the Mets Hall of Fame in 1983. Okay, so I think the last thing I can do is go through rivalries. I'm just going to double check. Yes. Do, do I do all stars or, or is that going to be too lengthy? We just want one more sec. Just one second. Mm. No, we do it right. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at who the Mets' biggest rivals are in Major League Baseball. Okay, we've done this obviously every time so yeah so who are the Mets biggest rivals okay so give me two seconds to look this up Okay, we go top five. Let's go top five. Top five rivals in franchise history. Okay, let's do that, shall we? Here we go. And this will be the last one we'll do to finish off the sh off the show. So let's look at the top five rivals in New York Mets history. Okay, we did this with the Phillies on the last show. Really interesting to see there. Okay. So first up, we've got you, Fred Bird. Yeah. Oh, shall I bring him over? Yeah, you are. Come look. We need to make sure you and Clark are ready for London. Because you two are coming back again, along with Stomper. And hopefully I'll come back with a fanatic. Yeah, look, there you are, there. Look, there he is in black and white, there. Look, oh, you're a big rival of the Mets. Ooh, an interleague rival. Which actually is not surprising because Fred Bird actually has got quite a lot of interleague rivals. And I mean, I know last year, obviously, we had him, him come, over, come over to London with Clark, but, um... I would not be surprised if in a future world tour the Cardinals get pitted against either the Dodgers or the Mets because Fred Bird had actually got a lot of intra-league rivals in the uh, in the National League. Uh, I think last year they did, they did the right thing by pit part pairing with, with Clark. That was kind of the right thing. But I would not be surprised if, if, if the Cardinals get to go on a world tour. I would not be surprised if they get part with either the Dodgers or the uh, Mets. Um... Yeah. So yeah, so the Mets and Cardinals had plenty of battles in, back in the day. Uh, before there was a National League Central. Uh, the Cardinals were in the NL East with the Mets. So that obviously meant many more games against each other. And over time, the two grew to become decent rivals. So yeah. So yeah, so yeah, so yeah, Fred Bird. 
So, will I definitely have your backing over the weekend? Oh, lovely Fredbird. Lovely Fredbird. Do you reckon I'll have Clark's? Do you reckon I'll have Clark's backing as well? Because Stomper's got no choice. <laughs> Stomper has no choice. Stomper has to back with back the Phillies. He has to be with me because we are still friends. Still love him, even though I've left left his, left him behind. I still love him. So, so Stomper's got no choice. He has to support the Phillies. But I'm but I've got your backing. Ah, lovely Fredbird. I love you, Fredbird. Lovely. So you've got my backing. Uh, no, we won't go and pester Clark. We'll do that near um before the first game. Yes, we'll do that. But glad to know I've got Fredbird backing. Lovely Fred. Lovely Fredbird. Uh, do you want to go now? Yeah, because, um, yeah. Go, 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 you go get ready for London. Make sure Clark, back, go and ask, you know what, you can go and ask Clark if he's, if he's going to be, if we're going to be back in as well. Yeah, off you go, good boy. Off you go. There we go. Oh, lovely Fred, but. There we go. Eh, I've got one of last year's, year's, look, year's London is part of in my, in my corner. Uh, Great work. Okay, so yep, that's one then. Let's take up the next one, shall we? We may have mentioned the Mets as well, the rather the cards when we did to be about about cards last year. We may not. We're not. Oh, anyway. uh, another uh, NL league rival, the, the Dodgers. So, Redbird, speak of the devil, and it shall appear. Yeah. Um, it's New York and LA, but, but but deeper. So the Mets and the Dodgers, they represent two of the biggest sports markets in North America. Naturally, any high-profile game between these two will be a lot bigger. Um, so, yeah, so I could easily see this being as another potential world tour series if they ever do pick these because the Dodgers get a lot of these the Dodgers do I mean with these world tours the Dodgers and the Padres keep getting picked quite a lot so if I had gone the Padres way the amount of air miles I would have clocked in would have been whoo would have been massive um but yeah so um the Mets are actually, the Mets are actually sorry not, not, not Mets the Dodgers actually, for me. the Dodgers actually, you pick up. The Dodgers got a lot more um, interleague rivals than you think. Uh, you think they, should, they have got enough decent rivalries in their division in the in the West, but actually the Dodgers they've got a lot more interleague rivalries than you might think, particularly this one, um, because the connection goes deeper. Because of course the Dodgers um, were originally in Brooklyn, or oh, well, the two teams the Mets helped replace in 1962. When they brought National League Baseball back to the Big Apple. Uh, historically, they are somewhat rivals without even playing a game. <laughs> um, the Mets and Dodgers, they have played each other plenty of times over the years, despite never sharing a division. So, like the last one with Fred Buzz, the Mets did one time share with, with, with the Cardinals, with the Dodgers, never happened. Um, in the other days, National League included all of the teams. Um, so match between these two were a little more common um, when the Dodgers became representatives of the National League West the rivalry uh, meant only a little bit uh, less uh, the two clubs would see each other uh, several times in the postseason uh, first it was actually in, 19, in the 1988 NLCS which the Dodgers came away victorious and then the Mets took the next series in 2006 and they swept the Dodgers in the NLDS and then the two would match up again to each other one more time in 2015 and again the Mets were the NLDS winners and they are both and I have to say well people who want the next one they are both big spenders in massive markets okay yeah so whew. I worked in a song, we've not got time. Okay, and now we go to the Yankees. Now, 
Obviously, we do have a couple of two-team markets in Major League Baseball. You've got, well, you've got three. Currently three at the time recording this episode. In, three, in 2024! Because God knows that may now get reduced to... Because I've been reduced to three. It might, in the future, get reduced to two. And then just one. And then just... Just one. Oh, God. Um, the Yankees. Um, it's interesting, though, how the two team markets, they don't really see as big rivals because that's because they are all in different leagues. You've got the Yankees in the, in the American League, Mets in the, in the National League. Then the other market was the Chicago market. You've got the White Sox in the, in the American League. And then Clark is in the National League. And then the, the other big market, the, the LA market, you've got the Dodgers, who actually are at LA, then the National League, and then the Angels, who are of course in Anaheim, in the American League. So you don't, so you don't, so the rivalries don't really, you know, cause it's over the last two years we've had everybody play everybody. So any intra intra league rivalries, they're not really taking shape as yet because we're still just used to this play um but no the yankees there is a rivalry there between the mets and the yankees but it's more geographical uh they both represent obviously the same same city uh compete in the same market uh, well unless you live in the, in the bronx or uh, or uh or flushing you have a hard choice as to which team you deserve can your life do, as it would be in the NHL with the Rangers and Islanders. Even if you do live down the street of Eva Ballpark, surely there are plenty who have gone against the, the neighbourhood and chosen the other. The Mets and Yankees play each other ev uh, played each other every season because of the rivalry in the new play start starting. Uh, regardless of how the schedule may schedule may change. Uh, the Met and Yankees always on the other scheduled with games as typically scheduled at both ballparks. The rivalry reached its pinnacle in 2000 when the pair met in the World Series. The Powerball Yankees of course won over the Met who hadn't been in the World Series since 1986. Uh, they were going to make it back again until 2015. Uh, going to get up against the Yankees as a, as a rival of any kind is tough. The Mets, under the New York ship of Steve Cohen, might have a chance to reverse the clock. Things may eventually feel a little more like the mid 1980s when the city was a bit more of an orange and blue than pinstripe. Okay, let's see who's next. Of course, Billy! Has to be on this, isn't he? Now. I mentioned a lot I'm going to, to, to get to know about the Phillies. I can't mention this is more of a friendly rivalry. Now, of course, I'm still a transfer, so I'm still getting used to fit all the Phillies rivalries. But I kind of look, look at this is more of a friendly rivalry. Whereas with Braves one, that is hate your guts. Um, but, but the closest rival geographically within the division is, of course, the for the Mets is, of course, the Phillies. Look. And also the longest one to face off against against the Mets. Nobody's played them more. Uh, now this rivalry actually between the two sides is a bit precarious. When the Mets are at their best, the Phillies tend to struggle and of course vice versa. Uh, it was only 2007-2008 when the two clashed and it felt like a true matchup of heavyweights. The Phillies came away as the winners of both times. However, over the years, each has taken turns at spoiling the season for the other or pounding the other into submission. These two clubs have yet to meet in the postseason, which is a bit of a shame because it could draw the baddest of sports blood out of it. Um, New York and Philadelphia fans are often neighbours in many parts of New Jersey, even in northern Pennsylvania. Some land a little more towards the Big Apple than the city of Broadway Love. Only because both organisations never had their share of struggles and are rarely winning at the same time does this not get the number one spot. Maybe the biggest battle of all 
of all is this war is over the right to Yeah, I believe the capture of the Mets before it belonged to the Phillies, courtesy of Todd McGraw. Uh, one thing we can all agree on, you got to believe this rivalry will never end. Of course, it will be renewed in London in a few weeks' time. But hopefully, a, hello, a nice, he it'll be a nice heavenly weekend. No blood spilt. Okay, it'll be a nice heavenly weekend. It was, it was last year between these two sides. Over there, Fred Bird Club was in Clark, and that's a bit of rivalry. Nice, no fisty fights last year. We're going to say again this year, okay? And the last one, one thing that we and the Mets have in common is our hatred for the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> now, the Braves weren't always a, a National League East rival of the Mets. This didn't stop the rivalry from kicking off, though, to new heights in 1969. The two played the first ever NLCX with the Mets coming out on top. They'd see each other in the postseason again in 1999 with the Braves winning that time. Uh, and it ended a decade of dominance from the Braves which would continue into the 2000s. They hadn't really stopped in the 2020s either. Older Mets fans might not agree with the Braves being the biggest rival of all. Uh, in the 1970s and 80s, clashes between the two sides weren't so notable. It wasn't until LB's realignment that put them together in the East in 1995 when we began to care about where Atlanta was in the standings. Another thing that Phillies and Mets fans have in common. The Braves have easily been the best uh, in the division since 1985, when the five teams currently in there were set. Uh, the Nationals com converting from being the Expos included. More often than not, it's the Braves, uh, the Mets and the Phillies need to chase. With all those years built up in the 1990s and 2000s, it's hard for fans of a certain age to think of anyone else as the biggest rivals of the Mets. And probably also of the Phillies. So there you go, so there you go. So those are some of the Mets' biggest rivals to round up the show. So there we go. So there we go. So that's where we're going to leave it. Yeah, that is your get to know you about the New York Mets. Like I said, there's going to be a link to their history page in the video description. So you can go read that. Check out, check out the timeline as well. Uh, it's well for read. Um, but yeah, so there you go. So there you go. So that is a little, get you know, a little get to know you about the New York Mets. So we should now all be set, ready for the World War Weekend in London. And that's it for today's show. If you've loved it, do click the like button, don't subscribe to the yet. Um, click the subscribe button, I'll subscribe to you and know when you come out of the You can ring the bell, stay up to date. I know it's been corny ever since I've become a Phillies fan. But you can ring it to start to know all the latest content. My official YouTube handle is at George Hand. And as personal as I say is, see you all in London. And until the next time, bye bye.